Today we're going to be looking at 20 rare nickels that sold at auction for some good money. So welcome back to Couch Collectibles. Hope you guys are having an awesome day as always. We're going to be looking at rare mint era nickels that maybe you can look for in coin collections that you may have inherited, coin rolls from the bank, or even in some cases in your pocket change. So as always, let's just hop into this one. Starting off first here with an older 1953 Jefferson nickel. We will get into the 2000s and more modern coins here as we go. This coin is graded by PCGS, the coin grading company, at a VF30. So you see on the obverse, the front of the coin, it looks very normal. Here on the reverse is where we really see that mint error. Uh, it has a split planchet. Uh, so a VF30, not a very good condition coin. However, that mint error still gives the coin a lot of value. And that's why this nickel sold for over $380 at auction. Now here is a very valuable Jefferson nickel from 1959. This coin looks very normal on the reverse like any old Jefferson nickel. However, the mint error is here on the obverse of the coin. The coin has a staple struck into the obverse of the coin. As we zoom in there, we can see that to the left of Jefferson's nose. Uh, the coin is only graded at an XF45, so again, not a high mint state graded coin. However, that staple being struck into it at the mint is what's going to give it all of its value. And that's why this nickel sold for $780. Here's a 1963 Jefferson nickel that was struck onto a defective planchet, graded at a mint state 64 by NGC. This coin sold for around $70 at auction, so always be on the lookout for defective planchets. Here is a 1964 Jefferson nickel that has been broad struck, which you'll see around the rim of the coin. And then it also has an obverse indent, uh, which is taking up a good portion of the coin going through Jefferson's face there. So this coin ended up selling for a little over $100 graded at a mint state 65. Now here's a 1972 D mint mark Jefferson nickel that has an obverse die break. Uh, so you'll see that there at the top of the coin here on the obverse. You know, these are also referred to as cuds. You can look for cuds on all kinds of different coins, not just nickels. And some will be much smaller than this. Some could even be much larger and take up a good portion of the coin. Uh, but this one is a nice cut. It's pretty long, uh, you know, goes all the way around there. So it's a pretty nice cut. This coin sold for over $130 at auction, graded at a mint state 65. Now here's a 1976 S Mintmark Proof Jefferson Nickel. So this will be in your 1976 proof sets. You can look for errors on those coins as well. This is graded at a proof 69, so just one grade away from a perfect grade. 70 is the highest you can get on the coin grading scale. This coin has an obverse die break as well, which we'll see there below the mint mark and the date as we zoom in there. So it's much smaller than the cud that we looked at on the last nickel, but this coin still sold for over $310 as a result of the mint error and its grade. Here's a 1977 S mint mark. Again, we have a proof coin here, graded at a proof 65, so uh, you know, not a high grade for a proof coin like that, it's such a more modern coin, but it does have an obverse indent, which we can see at the top of the coin. And this nickel ended up selling for $180 as a result of that mint error there. Now here's the 1977S mint mark. Again, this is going to be the proof nickel that was struck onto a 10 cent planchet. So a Jefferson nickel design that was struck onto a Roosevelt dime planchet. This coin ended up selling for over $2,000 at auction. Unbelievable. Now here's a pretty cool mint error. It's a 1983 Jefferson nickel. As we zoom in there, you can see the reverse building, the lines from the building on the reverse of the coin there coming through here on the obverse of the coin. And that is a die clash. Now it is graded by PCGS at an AU53. So it's not an extremely uh, high mint, mint state grade. You know, if it was, it would have sold for more money. If it was in worse condition, it could have sold for less. Uh, but the coin still sold for $120, which is not too bad for, you know, a grade like that. But it is a very nice and noticeable die clash. Again, on the reverse here, you can see the outline of Jefferson's head and profile there. So pretty cool. $120. Bucks. Now here's a 1984 Jefferson nickel that was struck onto a 10 cent blank planchet. It's not the proof coin, it's the regular business strike coin from 1984. And this coin ended up selling for over $525. As you can see, the whole design of the nickel does not fit onto the dime planchet there. Graded at a mint state 63. Here's a 1998 Jefferson nickel P mint mark that has been broad struck out of collar. Graded by PCGS at a mint state 66. 
Nice condition coin here, nice broad strike. The coin ended up selling for around 80 bucks at auction. Here's a 1998 Jefferson nickel that has been multi-struck. So pretty obvious mint error. Don't need a coin microscope for anything like this. This coin ended up selling for a little over $1,000. Can you believe that? Five cents, turn it into a thousand dollars, graded at a mint state 67. Here's another 1998 Jefferson nickel that has a die cap. Again, very extreme type of mint error here and very noticeable. This coin ended up selling for over $610 at auction. Here's a 1998 Jefferson nickel that was struck onto a one cent planchet. So you got the nickel design struck onto a Lincoln cent planchet. That's why it's got that copper coloration to it and the whole design does not fit onto the planchet. This coin ended up selling for $288 at auction. Here's a 1999 Jefferson nickel that has triple curved clips. Pretty self-explanatory. You can see all three clips on the coin here. It is created at a mint state 65 and this nickel ended up selling for a little over $60 at auction. Here's a 1999 Jefferson nickel that has been broad struck, which we'll see around the rim of the coin. And then it also has that large obverse indent taking up a, a good portion of the nickel there. This coin ended up selling for a little over $90 at auction. Here's a pretty cool mint error. Now we looked at the Jefferson nickel struck onto a Lincoln cent planchet. This is actually the Jefferson nickel design from the year 2000, overstruck onto a 1961 Lincoln cent. Now was that done on purpose in the mint? I don't know. Uh, 1961 penny just laying around there while they're producing 2000 Jefferson nickels. You be the decider of that. So you'll see the design of the Lincoln cent along with the Jefferson nickel here. This coin ended up selling for over $6,000. Whoo, 6,000 bucks. Now here's a 2000 Jefferson nickel that has been double struck with that second strike being off center. Very obvious and noticeable type of mint error not finding that in a coin roll, but the coin did sell for over $125. Now here is a 2015 Jefferson nickel. As you see, it looks very normal. However, it has a rotated die. So you'll see the Jefferson nickel in this image. It's straight up and down, the design is correct. If you pull your nickel from the bottom and flip it up, the reverse design should look exactly the same. It should be uh, level, it shouldn't be rotated. However, it is rotated all the way around 90 degrees. So it's not supposed to be rotated like that. So you could flip over all your coins from the bottom, flip them, grab them by the bottom and flip them over. And if it's rotated, then it's a rotated die. In this case, this coin only sold for around 80 bucks. So not very valuable, but you know, there are plenty of rotated dies out there on all kinds of different coins, even half dollar coins. So not just Jefferson Nichols. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Feel free to check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.